hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real, it is living, it is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people, but he is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on a cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church. And good morning, West Shore. Welcome. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. It's good to see everybody here. Well, here's a spoiler alert. If you saw Pastor Tim's devotion this morning, or if you haven't, but uh, he was talking about how the difference between us in the church and those outside the church is only the grace of God. That's the only difference. We're all sinners. We all have baggage. We all bring garbage to the table. But it's through that grace that we're able to have a better life. So stand up with me as we open up this morning service, and we're going to sing about how Jesus paid it all. And I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of
let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are weak and we are small compared to your infinite love and grace. And Father, we are just so grateful that we're able to proclaim that we are your children because of that love and that mercy. Father, that you sought us out before we even knew you existed. And Father, that you loved us while we were still in our mother's wombs. And that even if I were the only one, you still would have sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. Father, each one of us can proclaim that this morning. And Father, we do so boldly because through the name of Jesus, we have power over death. We have power over sin. We have power over our circumstances. And we claim that power this morning. Father, as Pastor Tim brings your word, Lord, I pray that that power would just flow in and through him. Father, that your words would be strong and be vibrant. And that we can proclaim those promises all through this year. Father, we're no different than anybody else. But through Jesus, we have grace. And that is available to everybody else. Let us show that this year. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. The new year is often a time of reflection, a chance to look back on the past 365 days and remember. Sometimes the memories bring a smile, and other times they break our hearts. Chances are you've experienced a bit of both this past year. The new year is also a time to look ahead, to imagine what could be, to scan the horizon with expectation, and seek God's guiding hand. It's a time to strive for better, to live louder, love stronger, and be more of who God has created us to be. It's an opportunity for new beginnings, a chance to start fresh, to pursue God with a renewed passion, and to press on with all our hearts. The truth is, God has been faithful this past year, and that faithfulness promises to carry us through the next. As the new year begins, may we remember this one simple truth. In Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. Well, good morning, West Shore. It is great to see everyone here, and I just want to take a minute and ask you, if you would, to reflect on that video that we just saw, that it is a new year, and there are still challenges. We know that every morning we wake up, and there are challenges. Amen? Amen. That's right. But I want you to focus on one thing in that video, that God has been and will be still faithful. Amen not going to change. The world around us changes all the time. He does not change. So we want to welcome you this morning to this first Sunday in 2022. And uh, we are glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. If this is your first time here, you haven't been here in a while, or you're watching online, um, we would love for you to fill out a connection card in-house. We have them in the worship guide. If you would fill one of those out, drop it in the offering plate either at the front or the back of the church. And if you're watching online, you can go to wsfamily.net slash connect and fill out a connection card. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, um, please in-house fill them out. Drop them in the offering plate. If you're watching online, go to info at westshorebaptist.org and email us, and we will be sure to pray for your prayer request as well. So as you know, each month we try to do a uh, a mission project, and our mission project for this month, once again, is to help Mission Tampa out with their PB&J. 
Um, now, their mission has changed just a little bit, but they are still doing an incredible work. They still um, have a mobile dental ministry that um, is part of their mission, and we support that with our mission dollars. But one of the things they have changed is their food distribution. And what their food distribution is looking like now is they're doing what they call a backpack program. And that backpack program is there are several schools throughout the uh, city of Tampa that they send home every Friday a bag of food that will help kids who don't have meals on the weekend prepare meals. Their parents are working or whatever, and sometimes they don't have what they need to eat on the weekend. One of the key things they do is they put peanut butter and jelly in those bags. So our mission with peanut butter and jelly has not stopped. The only thing we're asking is that we stick to the small to medium-sized jars because they go in their backpacks to carry home on the weekend, and so we want to make sure we do that. So start looking for sales, looking for deals. Let us know about it, and we will get um, start collecting it. So, Are you glass? Yes, yes, please avoid Please avoid glass because obvious, for obvious reasons, yes. <laughs> yep, yep. Stick to the plastic jars if you would. Um, but that will be our mission project for this month. So we're glad you're here today. Uh, next week we'll be starting a uh, brand new message series. Today we're actually wrapping up our Christmas series, The Missing Piece. Next week we're starting a series for the new year called Count Me In. Count Me In. And we're going to talk about how God wants to use each and every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter where we are, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, God wants to use us. So make your plans to be here next week. And we want to welcome those that are watching online this morning. Um, we know a lot of people are out with um, various reasons. Some are traveling. And as we know, let's not shy away from it. Uh, Omicron is running through the ranks. But that's okay because God is still faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pastor Jay, let's sing. Well, you know, there's a lot of focus at the beginning of a new year on new beginnings, new starts, new things. But you know what? Through God, we get that every single day. Every day we wake up, it's a new beginning. And as Pastor Tim said, there, there, there's challenges. There's challenges to every day that we get up. But there's also opportunities. And that's what those challenges present. They present us with opportunities to share God's love, to share His grace, to share His mercy. So... I pray that as we go into the new year that we remember that each day is a fresh start. Each sunrise is a fresh start for us to have a new beginning through God's grace. Amen.
God that you would die to save a broken soul like mine. Who am I? Who am I that the maker of the heavens knows my name? The author of the oceans gave me Pastor Jay did that to her. <laughs> for our focus prayer time this morning, I want you to do something for me, if you would. If you have a Bible with you, would you raise it up? If you don't, grab one out of the, the pew in front of you. I want to make sure those Bibles, I'm not going to ask you to look anything up. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. My, if you want to come up here and read it for me, uh, but hold, hold those Bibles up. Hold those Bibles up. All right. All right. You can put them down now. <laughs> Somebody's holding up their iPad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for all kinds of things. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I want you to know that for centuries, people have tried to destroy the word of God. They've had book burnings. They've tried to outlaw it. And they can't do it. They can't do it because it's the word of God. But I want to make you aware of something that the enemy is doing in our culture today. He's not attacking the word of God from the outside so much. He's attacking it from the inside. He is convincing believers that things that the people of God have believed for 6,000 years, starting with the Old Testament, and moving into the New Testament, he is convincing people that what we have believed is not exactly right. That it's just a little bit off. That, that all those thousands of years ago when people believed that because they weren't enlightened enough. And so what, I want, want, what I've asked Corey to pray and what I want you to pray about today is that we would have a renewed emphasis in our lives and in our church and I'm even going to say it in my preaching that we would not veer from the authoritative word of God that it is the word of God that it was inspired by the Holy Spirit not like an artist is inspired to paint something not that type of inspiration the type of inspiration that comes directly from the Holy Spirit that, that caused Moses to, to, to write down certain things, that called, caused Isaiah and Ezekiel and Daniel to write down certain things, that caused the Apostle Paul and all of the other disciples to write these things down, that they were not their words, they were the words of the living God. And my prayer for us and my prayer for you and, and for myself and for our church is that we will, in spite of the attacks that may come, 
we will stick to the truth of the Word of God. That when God says it, that's it. That's it. You know, there was an old bumper sticker that I, I didn't agree with and I didn't like. It said, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter where you believe it or not. If God said it, that settles it. And so I, I want us to pray. And as we start this new year, I want us to have a, a, a renewed devotion to the Word of God. Corey. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you saying thank you again for allowing us to be in your house, allowing us to hear this word and hear this message. Lord, and I just pray that uh, each and every one of us would would seek your wisdom, would seek your your word even more each and every day, Lord. You, you've called each of us to read your word, to be involved in your word, and to let it impact each and every one of us, Lord. Uh, I think that that's something that, that, that we lose sight of. You know, we, we think, oh, well, I'm, I'm living by Christ, or I'm doing this or that that shows my faith. But, Lord, if we're not in your word each and every day, we're not living the way that you've called us to live, Lord. So I just pray that we we be just immersed in it. We be just dripping with your word, Lord. We live in a world where everyone, when we look for information or we look for answers, we go to Google or Bing or whatever search engine you might uh might use these days, Lord, but I pray that we use something that, that doesn't go by algorithms, that doesn't have fact checkers, that doesn't have opinions or anything that can be misconstrued, Lord, that we go to your word when we're looking for answers for things, Lord, that we go to the almighty Amen. search engine, Amen. the almighty fact checker, Lord, that, that we would believe it too as well, Lord, and not try to, as Pastor Tim said, try to reinterpret your word to justify our sin, Lord. I pray that we would get uncomfortable at times, that we would get uneasy, because, Lord, when we get uncomfortable, when we get uneasy, that means that you're pointing out and you're calling out a sin that's going on in our life that we need to change. So I just pray that we would look for those chances, we would look for those opportunities, and that when we do, that we would go to your word and seek those answers, seek your wisdom and seek your almighty power through your word, which is the Bible, Lord. So I just pray for that to, to be upon each and every one of our hearts and to take hold in each every one of our lives lord thank you and it's in jesus name we pray amen 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 i like that the next time somebody asks you to google something say no i'm not going to google it i'm going to go to the real search engine wow i like that thank you Corey. well as i said earlier we are wrapping up our christmas series the missing piece um and what we have been trying to accomplish in this uh, series is to find out what is preventing us from having the peace of God be preeminent in our lives. And I want to start this morning with this last session by telling you what I said at the beginning and what I've said a couple times through this series, that as followers of Jesus Christ, peace is already in the world. And the reason that peace is already in the world is because the Prince of Peace lives within us. Lives within you and me as followers of Jesus Christ. So the Prince of Peace is already here and we have got peace in this world. Now it's not the peace that the world is looking for. You know, right now, everybody's worried about Russia and the Ukraine. They're worried about uh, the, the pandemic continuing. They're, they're worried about all kinds of things going on, whether inflation is going to go up even more. Um, everybody's worried about all this stuff, and they say there's no peace. Well, that's because you are tr looking for, number one, the wrong kind of peace, and number two, you're looking at the wrong, in the wrong place for the peace. You see, the peace that we're looking for is not found in financial security. It's not found in military security. It's not found definitely, definitely in looking to our government to fix everything for us. The peace that we're looking for is the peace that can only come by knowing that no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what is taking place, 
God is still in control. Throughout history, people have looked for this fleeting thing called peace, and they're trying to find it in too many of the wrong places. We need to look for the peace of God, and we need to find it in Him and Him alone. And that is all there is to it. So if your world is in upheaval, as many people's worlds are today, let me encourage you. Look for the peace of God to calm you, not the peace of the world. It will fail you. It will let you down. It will leave you shaking your head, wondering what is going on. Our key scripture for this entire series has come from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. And again, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica. And as Pastor Jay alluded to a little while ago, if you are watching at different times of the day our, our daily devotion, you'll know that we are in the, the writings of Paul. And I, I said this a couple of times, and I'll just say it again about the writings of Paul. Wow. Wow. I mean, he just does not, does not pull any punches. He does not hold anything back. He just says, this is how it is. I mean, if you just listen to today's and yesterday's in 1 Corinthians, man, that'll, that'll shake you. It'll shake you. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, to the church at Thessalonica, Paul said this, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times and in every situation. The Lord be with you all. Notice he did not say, May the Lord of peace give you the peace of the world. No. He said, may the Lord of peace give you his peace. The peace that only he can give. And can I tell you that it's a peace that passes all understanding? If you're a follower of Christ, hopefully and prayerfully you have experienced this. You're going through something crazy in your life. And all of a sudden, you just have a peace come over you. Can I tell you that that peace is not the peace of the world? That is something that, it is something that the world can't explain. And that is the peace of God. The peace that passes all understanding. Our human minds can't comprehend it. Because it's of God and not of this world. So what we've done in this series is looked at some things that we need to let go of in order to have the peace of God rule and reign in our lives. Because let, let's be honest about this. We often are the biggest problem. We, we are the reason that we don't find this peace that we're looking for. Because we say we're trusting in God, but as we talked about last week, we still want to hold control. I mean, I, I don't think I've had more comments about a, a sermon in a long time as I had last week. I mean, I had quite a few people come up to me and say, wow, I needed to hear that because I cannot let go of things. I can't let go of control. I have got to have control of things. Well, if you enjoyed that one, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Or you may be just a little uncomfortable with this one. Because in part five, we are talking about the idea that in order to have peace in our lives and to prevent us from, to, from preventing us from having that peace, we need to learn to let go of the past. And so we are letting go of the past today. The past is behind us. There's nothing you can do about it. The future is ahead of us. If that's the case, if that is the truth, then answer me this. Why do so many of us insist on holding on to the past? We refuse to let go of it. 
You know, the mind is, a, is, is a, an interesting thing. As you get older, as you mature, as the years pile up behind you, I'm trying to be very compassionate and diplomatic about this. As those, as those get more and more, have you noticed that you start to forget things? And you start to not remember things that you used to just didn't even think of? Oh, you, you can't remember them? But isn't it amazing how our minds will cause us to remember things from our past that were 20 or 30 years ago, and all of a sudden, you can't remember what you did yesterday, but you can remember something you said wrong 30 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Well, here's the deal. We all have a past. Now, some of, some of our pasts may be more colorful than others, right? Some of us might have a, a peaceful past. Others might be like, uh, well, you don't want to know what some of the things I did in my life. But we all have a past. And it's just amazing how our memories are really good at bringing those things back and remembering things that we have done. Our past is one of the things that keep us from finding the peace that we all so desperately seek. Because we hold on to the past and we refuse to let go of it. Now, none of us are perfect. There's only been one perfect person ever to walk this earth, and he's in glory right now. The rest of us, that means that we have all made mistakes, sinned, done things that we wish we could take back, and those things haunt us. I don't think there is any better example of somebody who had a past that haunted him than the example of the Apostle Peter. If you know the story of the Apostle Peter, he was brash, was a master at opening mouth and inserting his foot, and yet he became the leader of the church one of the greatest preachers the world has ever known. I mean, how many other preachers can say they've preached one sermon and 3,000 people got converted? I don't know anybody. But Peter did on the day of Pentecost. But Peter's life was not always like that. You see, because Peter went from one moment saying, Lord, I will go to the grave defending you. To Jesus telling him, Peter, you're wrong. In fact, before the morning breaks the next day, before that rooster crows, you're going to deny that you even know me three times. And that's exactly what happened to him. Jesus is arrested. Now, to Peter's benefit, the rest of the disciples were nowhere to be found. P Peter at least was someplace close, even if he was hiding behind a, a fire or a wall. But three times he was asked, hey, you sound like you're from southern Jerusalem with Jesus. Are you with him? No. Aren't you one of his? No, I don't know the guy. Never heard of him. Three times. And with probably the most convicting and yet the most compassionate scene in all of biblical history, the rooster crowed and Peter looked up and Jesus was like, you, you've seen people do that today, right? I'm, I'm watching you. Peter looks up 
and Jesus is eyeing him. And in Peter's mind, Jesus is convicting him. Now, there's an argument to be made that, that Jesus' look at Peter was not one of convicting, conviction. It was one of compassion and don't worry, Peter. Things are going to be okay. But in Peter's mind, he was convicted of what he had done. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about your past. Does it compare to Peter's? Have you denied knowing Christ? Maybe you have. Maybe you uh, are with some friends and you're out to dinner and, and they're not believers and, and you won't even stand up and say quietly, excuse me while I ask the Lord to bless my food while you go on with your party. I don't know. Peter denied three times the very one that he said he would never deny, that he would go to the grave defending but thankfully for Peter and thankfully for us, that was not the end of the story. Because what we find is we find Jesus is crucified. He is buried. He comes back to life. He is raised from the dead. And one morning, Peter and the other disciples, the fishermen, they're out in a boat. And Jesus is doing what he always does. He goes to the beach. That really should be convicting for those of us that don't like the beach. I have to think about that. But the disciples are in their boat and they look on the shore and they, one of them says, Looks like Jesus over there. What's he doing? Well, he does what he always does. He's cooking breakfast. They get to the shore. Jesus indeed was fixing them a meal, fixing them breakfast. And a conversation ensues between Peter and Jesus. And I want you to listen to what John, how John records this in his gospel. Chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said, and then Jesus said a third time as he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. It's funny, Peter wasn't hurt when he denied him three times. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this incredible word that you've given us this morning. We thank you for the life transformation that is taking place in Peter. Help us, Father, to learn from Peter this morning. Help us to do what he did and put our past behind us. And we'll thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let me just sum this up for you. We, we could do a whole, a whole couple of hours on this one passage. But what Jesus is actually doing here is restoring Peter from his past. Peter said three times, I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know him. And three times Jesus said, okay, let's take care of that problem. Do you love me? Yes, I do. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, I do. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Yes, I do. Take care of my sheep. In that instance, what Jesus was doing for Peter is what he wants to do for us. He wants to take care of our past. He wants us to realize that our past, because we are followers of his, because he paid the price for us, our past can be washed away and we can move forward. That's what Peter did. 
That's what happened to Peter. If this instance had never taken place, there's a very good argument that Peter would have never become the disciple that he became. Because in my mind, and, in, and if I'm painting a picture of this, the same way that Jesus looked at Peter when the rooster crowed, Jesus looked at him when he asked him these questions. And he said, Peter, do you love me? And he's got that same look of compassion <coughs> in his eyes. And he says, then feed my sheep. Then take care of my lambs. Take care of what I've called you to do, Peter. So if you think <coughs> that your past is bad, find some encouragement from Peter's. Peter was able to let go of his past, and so should we. And yet we hold on to it like, like it's a life preserver. Can I tell you that your past is not a life preserver? It's an anchor. It won't keep you afloat. It will sink you. So let go of it. Not that your past doesn't matter. Because your past does matter. Because just like Peter was allowed to grow because of his past, you and I are allowed to grow and progress because of our past, because we have been forgiven of that past. And so this morning, just quickly, I want to give you four things, four reasons that we can let go of our past. If you're holding on to your past for whatever reason, this is for you. Number one, we can let go of the past because, as I just said, very simply and plainly, we have been forgiven. We have been forgiven. Jesus Christ, as we sang a little while ago, paid it all. He paid the debt. We know what Jesus said on the cross. When he was on the cross... As he was about to give up his spirit, he said the words in Aramaic to Telestai. It is finished. To Telestai is the Aramaic word that is used in accounting. And it means paid in full. You and I have been forgiven because our debt, our sin debt, has been paid in full. And it's been paid in full by Jesus Christ himself. Listen to what Isaiah said, talking about what the Messiah would once, once do for us. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah said, come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. First of all, we can let go of the past because our past has been completely forgiven. But we got a problem with this. And it's what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about the Word of God. Our culture has led us to believe that the word sin should be removed from the Word of God. That sin is no longer applicable to us. That we are okay. That we are free to do whatever we want. And sin is not involved. Well, let me tell you. You can take out Romans 3.23 all you want to. The truth of what God has told us is that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. And as you've heard me say before, I have done detailed theological research on the word all. No one is excluded from it. All means all. 
we have all sinned. And it's not, well, you know, I, I, this is the way I feel, so it's okay for me to do this. No, if the Word of God says it is sin, it is sin. God said it, I don't care if you believe it, that settles it. That's the way it is. Our world says there's no need for forgiveness because it, nothing's really sinful. Well, if that's what you believe, okay. But you're going to have to, at some point, reconcile that with God. Because God has said it. We have been forgiven. Now, we love forgiveness when it's directed at us. We have a problem sometimes when the forgiveness needs to go from us to somebody else. But there's something deeper that we need to understand. That not only can we let go of our past because we have been forgiven, we can let go of our past because our sin has also been forgotten. You see, God didn't just say, all right, Jesus died for you, and so I'm going to forgive you, but I'm still going to keep this ledger of all the things you've done wrong. And even though it's been forgiven, once in a while, if you tick me off enough, I'm going to open up that ledger, and I'm going to say, yeah, you remember that, don't you? That's not how God does it. You see, our past, we can let go of our past because our sin has been forgotten. I want to share two incredible verses with you. One from the prophet Micah and one from the psalmist. Micah chapter 7 verse 19 says this. Once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. Let's stop and talk about that for a minute. Let's... I've heard many people talk about, you know, when we're in the city and you look up at the sky, you really don't see the stars like you can. But when you go into the mountains or you go out into the middle of nowhere and you look up at the stars, you realize how vast and incredible it is. Have you stopped to think, though, how vast and how incredible the depths of the ocean is? I mean, there are places on this planet that we can't, we haven't even explored yet. We have not even explored. It's so dark and it's so far down, we haven't been able to get there. Now, let's go back to that verse again. Not only has your sin been forgiven, it's been forgotten. And according to Micah, he says that the Messiah will trample our sins under your feet and throw them where? Into the depths of the ocean. So your sin, not only has it been for, forgiven, but in the mind of God, it has been forgotten to the point that it's thrown into the depths of the ocean. You can't see it. You can't find it. You don't even know it's there. God has chosen to forget our sin. And then the psalmist does a little trick here with us, a little, little, little word, uh, play on words. He says, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. How far is the east from the west? We don't know. You can't figure it out. Well, I'm going to figure it out. I am going to go as far west. How many of you believe that that is west? Think about it for a minute. That is west, okay? West shore is that way. That is the west. I'm going to go as far west as I possibly can until I find the east. When will you find it? You can't find it. You can't find it. And that is what God has done through Jesus with your sin and with my sin. He has cast it as far as the east is from the west. Do you know what that means? It's forgotten. It's forgotten. Forgiveness is one thing. Accepting the fact that God has forgotten our, about our sin is completely different. If we can grasp that and if we can understand that, let me ask you a question. 
Why does it haunt us? Why does our past haunt us? If our sin has been forgiven and forgotten, why do we let it haunt us? Let it go. God's let it go. If there's ever anybody that has a reason to not let it go, it's God. And he has said, I've let it go. I heard it, I heard it said this, this way one time, that when we sin and we honestly and sincerely go to God and ask for forgiveness of our sin, and then five minutes later we go back and start to talk about that, that sin, you know what God's response is to us? What sin? What sin? You see, the, the question is whether you believe that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was enough to cleanse us completely of all our sin. When we say to God, again, remember that sin, we're saying Jesus' death was not enough. And where does that bring us? Where does that leave us? It brings us back to the Word of God because the Word of God says that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was and is enough to forgive us and for our sins to be forgotten. Two more. Two more reasons and two more understandings of why we can let go of our past. Number three, we've been given freedom from our past. Have you ever had something that is just weighing on your mind so much? That it just drives you crazy? I mean, are you like me? Would you, would you just like to be able at some point to have an off switch on your brain? Anybody? Can, can I get a te uh, can anybody testify with me here? Just an off switch. Turn it off. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how our, our minds just are crazy? Listen to why Isaiah says also about this. Chapter 61, verse 1. He says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. You know what they're set free from? You know what they've been set, they've, the captives have been set free from? Their sin. He's not talking about physical captivity here. He's not talking about the children of Israel in Egypt. He's not talking about the children of Israel in Babylon. He is talking about us being set free spiritually from the bondage of sin. Several years ago, Chris Tomlin was asked to, to rework the Amazing Grace song. And he added that that little portion at the end, amazing grace, my chains are gone. I want you to think about that. Your chains have no, not only been loosened, they're gone. They're gone. And so because of that, we understand that God has forgiven us, He has forgotten about our sin, and He has set us free. And He says, don't let your past drag you down now just one little caveat here we have not been set free to do whatever we want to do okay a lot of a lot of misconception about this well Jesus died for me he rose for me I've asked for his forgiveness so I can go do whatever I want I can go live my life and just be free well you're in for some trouble you can't do that can't do that. Jesus paid too high a price for us to think that we can just go out and do whatever we want. What do we need to do? We need to live our lives by the word of God. As Corey said, don't live our lives by the Google search engine. Live our lives by the God search engine. And finally, we can let go of our past because our past no longer defines our future. 
I want to take you all the way back to Peter. We started with Peter. His past could have defined his future. The fact that he denied knowing Christ could have defined, it could have set a path for his life that would have been terrible. But because of what Jesus did for him, his future was totally different. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, kind of explains this to us. We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Our past is the past, and we need to stop being stuck in the past because God has given us a future. And I want to share that in two, in two contexts with you. Number one, we have a future in eternity. We have been promised that we will spend eternity with Jesus and we get to rule and to reign with him for a thousand years plus. But don't let that stop you right here. Because we have a future right here. Now, we don't know, as we found out just a couple of days ago, when someone is going to draw their last breath, right? So we don't know how much of a future we have. Today may be the, all the future that we have, but we do have a future, and it's a future designed by God for us to do what he has called us to do. People say to me, oh, I just don't know what my purpose in life is, Tim. Well, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, that answer is very simple. Go into all the world proclaiming the good news, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we have been called to do. Well, I'm not a preacher. No, you're not. Some say I'm not. One of these days we're going to turn the house mics up so, so all this on the recording can be heard. <laughs> You're not a preacher, no. But you are a minister of the gospel. You have been called to proclaim the good news, to do what Proverbs says, to go and proclaim the future that God has given you by proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter where you are, folks, no matter what you've done, no matter what your past is, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, if you have sincerely thought about this and made this decision, I'm not talking about just sometime, well, there was this guy, this evangelist, and he, he, he said I should get saved, so I said this prayer, and I really don't know what happened after that. I'm talking about making the conscious, well-thought-out decision to be a follower of Jesus Christ. God's not afraid of your doubts. He's not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid of your whys. He wants you to think this out. To, to, as, we, as we said back in the first scripture that we used in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, he says, Come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. One of the earlier translations says, come, let us reason together. God wants you to think about this, to make that decision. And if you have been converted, truly converted, and you've called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your sin has been forgiven, it's been forgotten, you have freedom, and you have a future. And on January 2nd, 2022, I say to you, stand up and go forward proclaiming Jesus Christ. Let's do it. Let's not wait any longer. Let's do it. Will you pray with me?
Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that there is power in the word of God, that it changes lives, that it makes corrections, that it anoints things. And we thank you that we can be a part of that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will help us to let go of our past because of what you have done, because of what Jesus did. Help us to know that we are forgiven that our sin has been forgotten, that we have freedom, and that we have a future because of Jesus. And Folks, as you continue to pray, whether you're in person or watching this online, I would ask you to do what we just talked about. Seriously consider... If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, making the decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not about praying a prayer. It's not about following a set of rules. It is about totally and completely committing your life to Jesus Christ. If you've never done that, we ask that. We implore you that you would make today the day you do that. Also, if you are watching or here in person and your past continues to weigh you down, I would encourage you today to turn it over to Jesus. Let him do for you what he did for the Apostle Peter. Let him look you in the eye with eyes of compassion and let him say to you, I love you. Do you love me? And then let him forgive you of that past. Let him tell you that it's been forgotten. Let him give you freedom and let him prepare your future for you. These decisions are the greatest decisions that you will ever make in your life. Father, we thank you that we can make these decisions based on what Jesus did for us, not based on anything that we do. We thank you that Peter was forgiven, that he had a new path, not because of anything he did, but because of what you did. And the same is true for us. We say thank you, Lord. Move in our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. As you ponder and consider the things we've talked about this morning, there's something you need to pray about, if there's something you need to, decision you, you need to make, let today be the day you do it.
saying thank you again for allowing us to hear this word hear this message and just be just surrounded by you and be surrounded by your people lord and just be surrounded by the message that you wanted each and every one of us to hear today lord um i just pray that uh, so many of us that that deal with the struggles of our past and and constant reminders of areas where we've sinned and areas where we wish we would have done something differently said something differently lord Help us to remember that those things are forgotten in your eyes, Lord, that we are washed in your blood and that we are given freedom, Lord. So I just pray that we bask in that glory today, that we that we live on that and that we focus on that and that alone, Lord. And make ourselves better and just use everything that you've given us today, Lord. Thank you so much for everything that we have. I pray that you keep us safe, healthy, and protected and bring us back again next week. In Jesus' name, amen.